everybody. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. The question I'm asking and I want to show and answer is, are we there yet? Clearly, based on what I'm doing, we're not there yet. Because judging by my catacetums and how much they're drinking up the reservoir in the last four weeks, I've been doing this uh, recently every three days. And I think we should be there because I am starting to lose some leaves and they're starting to look tired and icky. But I think that the reservoir is being absorbed so quickly because all the bulbs are now in bulk up mode. So this is my Jumbo Mickey here. It has done fabulous, fabulous this year. I've got three beautiful new growths. And uh, yeah, they've all done really well, whether it's going to bloom on leaves or without leaves, that remains to be seen. But uh, I've got two somewhat diminished growth, but I've got one growth here that will actually match the previous year, plus a little bit more girth. And I can see it is starting to want to shed the leaves, but I am going to continue watering until I don't see them crack all the way up the bulb because I'm interested in bulking them up and if it's still drinking up the reservoir the way it is then it's getting more water. Here you can see I've taken a leaf off that was looking unsightly and I can peel off what's left. So that's what I'm looking for. Going yellow, starting to crack at the top but I want to make sure to maximize anything that it, it's still absorbing by filling up the reservoir. And over here is Jack of Diamonds. Let me get him. Look at this. Yeah, we got a spike. So this would be the first spike ever for me on a catacetum, which I think is quite an achievement. So that Jack of Diamond propels himself straight up into my favorite catacetum for being the first to bloom in my collection. Now I've got still some shriveled bulbs here and I don't like that they are shriveled despite the fact that the new growth is always being nurtured. Um, this is the first leaf that is starting to show signs of going but because of the spike I'm keeping that reservoir really full and flushing quite a lot and I'm getting these little aerial roots coming out, which is really cool. That's just recent, the last four or five weeks, those have developed. So Jack of Diamonds, if I don't mess up the spike, we're gonna see some blooms. I'm looking forward to this. I'm not gonna say that from the pictures, it's my favorite bloom of all time, to be honest. But hey, you know, it can be a different thing seeing something on a photo than actually seeing it in real. And then you might ask yourself, well, if you didn't like the picture, why did you buy it? Well, at the time I was getting into catacetums, nothing else was around and I wanted some. So I got the Jack of Diamonds. And if it's going to bloom, then you know what? It's a keeper. Nice new growth this year. Big stonking chubby one. And that's the one that's gonna bloom. And I guess a wasp has had too much happy sap, just sort of deteriorated in the corner there. <laughs> but the star of this collection, growth-wise, is my Fred Clocker After Dark Black Pearl. And this thing is just insanity. In my collection, I've seen others with bigger growths and bigger bulbs and bigger everything. But for me, my goodness, this bulb is just insane. It's gonna be a little bit bigger. Now, I don't always go by what the size looks like now. I always factor in a bit of shrinkage, a little bit of dehydration as they do with some time, it happens. But we definitely have at least matched last year's bulb. So that's a good thing. I'm really pleased about that. And it is drinking like crazy and it matured another little straggler bulb here in the back 
which started quite late in the season. But hey, if I now have two directions of growth, that's awesome. I have been removing some leaves from the bottom simply because they were yellowing and they were just in the way when I was moving it to flush it and to fill the reservoir. So I took them off. Uh, doesn't seem to have done it any harm. And now I'm just watching to see what this whole ridge does and bit by bit, I will decrease watering until then, I am giving this as much fertilizer and as much water as I can throw at it because for me, that bulb is still bulking up. And honestly, they all kind of look like somebody after Thanksgiving dinner, they <laughs> like they're about to burst. <laughs> but I love them. They're doing well. I'm really pleased with the progress this year. And let me show you, I'm gonna put them back on the shelf and I'll show you where they live. So this is my east side rack, which only will be here for another couple of weeks. And then it moves to the west side where the sun will be much more predominant over an extended period of time during the day. And they're right on the top. They do have a cover underneath, but in the morning they get the full sunlight coming in. But they did start out, let me move you down slowly, they started out when they started their new growth down here on the lower shelf with a lot of heat from the terracotta. And then bit by bit, I moved them up a shelf as the bulbs grew and the leaves grew until I believe they were acclimatized enough for the sunlight. And then they get like six hours of full sun up here every day. I have been washing them down with just pure RO water, trying to keep the leaves somewhat clean and free of that sticky, sticky happy sap. But this is where they live after they start that transition from the lower shelf and get all the way to the top. And this is where I will mature them and let the bulbs mature. And then we'll see what happens until they go inside when they go to sleep. So let's go and check on the dendrobiums. All right, so I don't really do winter rest as such. I'll qualify that. But these are the other two. Nobly, no ID, could be anything commercial, nobly here. And then my dendrobium berry odor on the right. Basically, the berry odor is pretty straightforward. If the canes are growing, then keep watering, keep fertilizing. It's just, that's the principle by which I grow. Um, I don't mind the keikis. I don't consider them part of growth. I could now already take them off and grow them on. But uh, I have had about nine mature growths this year. So they are done. They're completed. But I'm getting another flush of growths <laughs> coming through. <laughs> so I'm still watering and I'm still fertilizing full capacity. Still doing my 300 ppm as it drinks and it lives on the glass table right out in the blistering sun. There is nothing blistering at this time of year anymore, which is like towards third week of October. But it is still hot and it's full on direct sun. I don't do that in the summer, but now it can live out there. So I am still fertilizing as if nothing has changed. It's got these new growths coming and they need sustenance. It does that every year. You think you're just about done with it and then it brings on another charge. So happy to have that happen. No complaints. My Nobili, on the other hand, is another little story of its own. You can see the canes that it was bought with and then it just chucked out keikis the following year and I think that's just stress it needed to acclimatize I potted the keikis up into the pot and I was hoping for a proper growth from the base of the keikis in order to bring the plant back up to what it should be in my opinion well <clears throat> we've had a bit of a hit and miss we've had one keiki come out with a new growth but it's still growing but I don't see the potential yet of previous canes. However, another keiki over here on this side did produce a basal growth, 
that has shown a little bit more potential. Not quite there yet, but you know, it's better than, let's say, these funky ones back here. I mean, I'm sure they're going to bloom just, you know, as dendrobiums do, these commercial nobilies, they're not that difficult to get to bloom, but it would have been nice to have had the majority of my growths grow to this size. I even lost two grow basal growths. I had the mealy bug, and even though I, it was treated, you can see that uh, I'm still fighting it. That's just remnants from this morning. And I just wish they would just go away. There's plenty of other things they can feast on. They don't have to be on my orchids. So I'm just gonna show you where these guys live to give you an idea of what they're going to be up against during the winter. This is my east side table where we have a barbecues or where we eat outside and it's in full sun for about six hours a day. The east shelf is behind us right on the other side right here behind us and this is where they stay exposed to full sun when there is sun which recently we've had quite a lot. And if it rains, they'll get rained on. And if it doesn't rain, well, I water them. And my nobly will always have water in the reservoir, maybe not to the extent as per full-on growing season, but there will always be water in the reservoir to keep that lecker moist. So let's see. That's where they're living now over the coming two months. And when the temperatures drop way below 15 degrees, I'll take them to my blooming alley where it's still cold, but a little bit more protected. From the really cold temperatures, it's a little bit more protected over there, and they still get direct sun coming in through the trellising. So, pendant dendrobiums, are we there yet? This is my polyanthum. Beautiful, beautiful growth this year. I'm getting away from these ratty looking ones down here, which I keep peeling away, trying to clean them up, giving the orchid a little bit more of an aesthetic appeal, because it always looks like something the cat dragged in backwards, and I don't like that one bit. But now with my new growths, this year we are getting a little bit more of an aesthetic appeal to this dendrobium, which is polyanthum. And I love this one because it has a fleshy texture to the leaves. It's quite remarkable. Even the canes, they don't have a woody feel to them. They're, they're succulent-like. It's amazing. Very, very cool. Very different. So this one has had lots of new growth. How about that? <laughs> I've tried counting them, but my eyes go cross-eyed. A lot of new growth and they're even coming in through the middle here, so it's not just on the top. But are we there yet? And I would say, I would say, yes, we are. We're there. Now, for the time being, I am giving them still full fertilizer. Depending on how quickly the mounts dry up, it can be two times a day, it can be one time a day, but full fertilizer because I want the canes to bulk up. I'm not just going by the terminal leaf um, and stopping. I'm going by what I can see the canes are doing and by the temperature that I still have, which is still warm enough. And um, I want these canes to be chubby chubby, like really chubby. And then here's a unicum and we are there. This cane is done. It is bulking up as well. So fertilizer is still a go. And look at the roots in the back now. I have to be super careful. But the roots are coming out and I'm going to be putting some more of that white hob material in the back to protect them because every time I move it, clearly you can see that I'm going to be destroying roots. So at least I want to get some established inside hob material before then saying, nah, I've got plenty. Some collateral damage won't matter. Not for now. Every root for this one is still precious. But it's doing well. The cane has matured. And I think that next year I can get a larger cane out of this one, possibly about to here, but then that's it. These aren't big, big dangling dendrobiums. But they're certainly not stubby like these two new growths down here. 
but it's been through a lot with the hybrid experimentation of Ninja and Michael Mounts. Here's the other Unicom, the one that did bloom, but the cane was snapped and then I just took it off. And here you can see I do spend quite a bit of time sometimes just going on my canes and taking care of all that scruffy stuff that tends to grow and make them look nasty. But here there's still a little bit of growing to be done, but we've had a few little issues with hydration. The leaves aren't as clean as the other one over here. To, un to be understood because it hasn't grown any new growth. These are old and tired roots. It grew one new root, but no new growth since I cut that other cane off. So this one actually will have to do something for next year, but it's alive and it will stay alive. So I'm, I'm, I'm positive about that. One day, maybe these two can be on the same mount just to bulk up the plant a little bit. Anosmum itself, yeah, we're done. We're definitely done. Sad little growth for the year, which is understandable also because of what I've been trying to do for it, with it. It is now established on the mount. It does have a great root system for that one growth. I can't complain and I won't complain. And now I'm just going to hope that next year we will be on a roll with this one, one more new growth, and then see how well we can keep that growing lengthwise to get it to get some form of substance. I mean, even the cane that I got it with back in the day, that's nothing. That's nothing for an anosmum. But we have something that can photosynthesize. We have roots. So we're heading in the right direction with that one. Victoria Regina, are we there yet? Oh no, we're not. Victoria Regina will continue to grow for quite a few months. It's coming into its season now where things are getting cooler and it is starting to respond and become a little bit faster in its growth habit, which is awesome. It did well during the summer, it held on. There was no, I mean, it didn't like stop growing, but it slowed down during the hotter months. But I never had a problem with frazzling the growing points, which is great. That is super important. And these four new growths, I mean, can't complain. I'm starting on an, another new growth right there. The keiki, obviously not having much to live off of, minus its own roots and sustenance. It hasn't done too badly. It's gonna be all right. But I am interested to see how this one will do when I eventually see new roots and transfer it to one of these mounts. I think it'll go Ninja Michael Mount Hybrid, something of the sort. But I'm getting some little swellings at the end. It's possible we might get some blooms eventually again down the line. They take a long time to develop, so I'm not holding my breath but it's nice to see a little bit of swelling here and there. Full fertilizer still, absolutely full fertilizer. The anosmum I'm still fertilizing because I want the cane to bulk up. So all of them across the board, I haven't put them into any kind of, you know, just RO water routine yet. They're still doing okay. I'm gonna get out the community mound where there's three dendrobiums on one. I know, not a done thing, but hey, this is me, this is how I, I grew for the first few years until I figured out what I wanted to do. So I have a community mount, I'll just get that out and put these away. It's a little bit too sunny, I know. Nice problem to have, but uh, they're not quite ready for this amount of sun. And before we go to the community mount, this is where they live. The ones we just looked at. So we're facing west, south, north, but they are in full shade for now facing south. And that is how I like it because I don't move them unless I take them down to show them. Normally I just spray right across the board where they live and uh, that way the roots don't get affected. And you know, I was just hanging one of the unicorns back and I saw that I had broken some root tips, but Oh well, never mind. So they live up here facing south. 
I can encourage their pendant growing nature to be sort of one directional as, as instead of all over the place. And secondly, during the hottest time of year, it's full shade like you see now. And during the coldest time of year, when the sun is at its lowest, they get full sun. So I don't have to maneuver these guys at all, ever. Simply, I'm letting the angle of the sun do the work for me based on time of year. All right, let's look at the community mount. Wild, huh? <laughs> this is my community mount, and I've never changed it from the time these first three pendant dendrobiums arrived in my collection. I was not sure how I wanted to grow them, and I just slapped them on cork, and I had one piece of cork, and all three are now living on it. <laughs> so let's have a look. Are we there yet? And um, I only know for sure the ones that are blooming, which ones they are, and clearly this is the aphyllum. But I think, <laughs> you see, I have a sorola in here, and what an orchid this is. Blooming all summer long. Just gorgeous, just gorgeous. Constantly in bloom, it's been amazing. So these are old canes that I didn't grow. Here are coming new canes with more buds. And I'm thinking it is a Sorola simply by the shape of the cane, going to bloom on leaf canes. That should be very interesting because I have not seen that happen. But we will soon find out if it is a Seraula because on this beautiful jungle of community mount of dendrobiums, I have a Ceratolabium as well. And I'm thinking this is my Ceratolabium coming out because when this orchid was bought, I actually got two different orchids to my surprise. I wanted the Seraula, okay. But the sticks that were sent to me, turns out one of them is a Ceratolabium. Much, much appreciated. I call it Sharky, and when you see the blooms, you'll know why. Because I am thinking these are Sharky blooms. Because they're yellow. And they would be the first after a very long time. I'm thinking these are Sharky blooms as well because they are also much bigger. And they're sort of just tucked away back here, hiding. I uh, saw them recently and I was like, okay, there you are. Look, it already looks like a little bit of a shark from the side, how it's developing. I don't know if you can see the shape, but fantastic little blooms, not fragrant, bright yellow. It's just that they're so buried now by the aphyllum doing its monster thing. But I believe these are the canes of the Ceratolabium, as opposed to the smaller stocky ones back here being the Seraula. But we'll find out and then I can tag them properly. And down here, you'd think I was done, but you know, there's another new growth. What can I say? <laughs> I'm trying to keep this short, but here's another new growth. And I believe this is the Ceratolabium. And it's the first time I've seen such gorgeous, gorgeous canes. It's taken almost two years for this orchid to decide whether it wants to stay with me or not. But the aphyllum here, of course, is going to be the showstopper. And one day I'm going to have to decide about removing Ceratolabium and possibly Seraula. For the time being, aphyllum is not drowning Seraula out, but Ceratolabium may need to be moved. I'm just very hesitant because I need to see distinct root growth in there that pertains to this, this orchid here. And only then will I decide to move it. I've already got the ninja and Michael mounts ready for them for when it, the time comes. But for now, are we there yet? Getting distracted. And I would say a film is done. Every cane is showing, well, not this one, but it's almost a terminal leaf. But I'm not done fertilizing yet. I go full Monty on fertilizer until I'm comfortable that they are starting to drop their leaves. When I see them starting to yellow leaves, then I start to pull back on the fertilizer. But until then, 
I'm like, you can do better, you can get fatter, you can get stronger, and I don't stop. I mean, at the end of the day, if they're not going to consume, absorb, or take up any nutrients, then I'm just throwing it at it and wasting my fertilizer. But I'd rather err on the side of caution than stopping too soon. The film has done really well. Um, it's not fair to say that they're all really, really long because some have been mounted higher than others. But I think I've got the 80 centimeter as expected. And this one here is the meat one meter. Because that's where I want to get with my afilum. I want my canes to be one meter. Up here, not fair. They're not ready. These are keikis from keikis that I mounted a year ago. So they're only just now starting to establish as their own plants. Because the root system has gone mental. And I would turn it around, but trust me. It's all around the back as well. It's just gone nuts. When it comes to these old canes, I'm going to wait for them to be as bristle as twigs. Doesn't look nice, but when you look at this orchid from the front, there's plenty to cover up anything that might not be aesthetically pleasing. So I'm going to put it back where it lives, and then I'll show you why it lives where it does. Okay, so I am now facing west. My blooming alley is behind that gate. So this is south and this is north and we are east side. And I have it here all year round. Basically because I'm using the angle of the sun again to my advantage, I would like it to grow according to the mount and the orchids, which you can see my ceratolabium is not doing it and my aphyllum is starting to encroach on that left space with the other two dendrobiums. Yes, <laughs> it's a process. I'll get there eventually. But basically, the sun, morning sun hits it directly. In the hottest months of the year, it's only for a couple of hours, not that much even. And then it's in full shade, but it will grow a pendant orientation down. And then now, in the winter, I'm getting more sun coming from the left, which benefits the orchids that the dendrobiums that are growing now because the aphyllum just grows during the hottest months of the year the other ones start coming onto their own during the cooler months of the year and i want the light from the left to draw the canes towards that direction which clearly ceratolabium is having none of it <laughs> so we are all getting a little bit tangled up here it's going to be interesting to see when i have the opportunity and then the courage to take the ceratolabium off in order to start the process of separating the orchids based on who they are and not because I just needed to get them mounted ASAP. So I really hope that you enjoyed this little update of are we there yet and I would say almost. In all the cases I've shown, almost. And that is only because I am pushing them just that little, little bit further. We shall see. Thank you so very much for watching. If you have any questions at all, then fire away in the comments below. Let's discuss. Looking forward to hearing from you. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.